Welcome back to Taiwan Now. Look, in today's program, we've been discussing China's policy towards Tibet and the uprising in March this year. Mr. Kate uh, Tondop, we've been talking about uh, China's policy. How about Taiwan's policy towards uh, Tibet? Because as you know, that the, uh, different governments in Taiwan have different policies right. towards the Tibetan right. issue. So, uh, you see, Taiwan, right, uh, inherited the Tibetan policy when the Guomindang first came here yeah. in 1959. The Guomindang, uh, the uh, Republic of China, uh, considered us Tibetans as uh, part of the ROC. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether they still think that. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, in, in 2000, when uh, you see the DPP government came in, right, they disinherited this policy and That's said, right. you Tibetans are foreigners and we respect uh, right to self-determination, mm -hmm. right? So I think this is a, a very, uh, is a very important change and uh, for people of Taiwan to decide, you see, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, you see, uh, the, the Tibetan issue is, is, is very similar to the Taiwan issue, right? There are many similarities, mm -hmm. right? But then uh, the most important uh, factors which are which I consider is human rights you That's see right. uh, human rights is very important in Taiwan and human rights is very important for us Tibetans inside Tibet mm -hmm. right and uh, you see the amount of support that we uh, we get from Taiwan or from other countries or or I should say why are we Tibetans so successful today in mm -hmm. all over the world is because we have been able to generate sympathy That's you right. see this sympathy factor is a very important thing, mm -hmm. but this is something where uh, Taiwan is lacking. You yeah. see, they don't, you do not have that much sympathy as we have. Because you see, we have like maybe uh, uh, 60 Tibet support groups in 60 different countries supporting mm -hmm. us. And most of them are, are foreigners, right, That's supporting right. us. So you see, when the Olympic torch was taken to, to Europe and all over the world, right, look at all these foreigners running around, right? We, right. we Tibetans didn't have to do anything, mm -hmm. right? But this is something which uh, uh, Taiwan has to uh, realize, and it's something which uh, we can work on, right? Mm. But as you know that in the past few months, you know, the ruling government, the KMT, <coughs> has been trying to approach uh, the Beijing authorities try to uh, fix the relationship between Taiwan and Beijing. What's your view on their policy towards China now? I, I think you see, uh, uh, you see, the, uh, the Taiwan's, uh, the new Taiwan government's uh, approach to China. Yes, you have to do this, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, you have to take it step by step, and you have to see whether China will change or not. Yeah. In my personal view. The Chinese will not change. This is all pre-Olympics politics, yeah. you see. Post-Olympics will be something else. This mm -hmm. is my personal feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just feel that, you see, uh, if you think China will uh, dismantle their missiles today, uh, I think that's an impossibility, right? Mm -hmm. And those missiles are kept there to, to remind whichever government is in Taiwan and the people of Taiwan that who Big Brother is. Yeah. You see, this is this is a very uh, important thing. You mm -hmm. see, and whoever thinks that these missiles can be dismantled is very naive. Mm -hmm. You see, or is having some wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. You see, so because for for instance, like uh, in Tibet, the Chinese have nuclear missiles which are facing India, and mm -hmm. they have kept them there from 1975. Yeah. And even today, when India and China have good relations, those missiles are still there. It's mm -hmm. just a reminder that who Big Brother is. You see, that's right. And in, at the same time. Uh, the government of India has been, uh, from 1985 till today, uh, upgrading its own uh, self-defense missile system because mm -hmm. they are worried about this. So that's why, uh, uh, you see, I think Taiwan also has, has to be worried and has to continue to be wary of China because right. China is not going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see uh, what, uh, as you said earlier, Hu Jintao may be a pragmatic pragmatist or he may be, uh, you see, different from, you see, the older generation, yeah. but uh, it's still that it's the power which they need uh, uh, and it's a very important thing mm -hmm. for them to try and um, win over Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But in addition to its uh, rigid principles in, in imposing uh, their policy towards Taiwan and towards Tibet, what do you think about your experience of engaging talks with Beijing? Is there anything that we can learn from your experiences? I think, you see, we, we've learned from each other, we've exchanged op opinions because, you see, how uh, Beijing deals with uh, Taiwan is a reflection of, uh, you see, uh, uh, what's going to happen with us, yeah. you see. So, um, 
we hope, I hope that uh, you see uh, there would be some sort of uh, uh, what you call breakthrough this time when mm -hmm. our uh, uh, envoys go to Beijing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, uh, as I said earlier, it's like a pre-Olympics, uh, uh, what do you call, a rattling, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think uh, that, uh, what do you call this, in, in the over 25 years of dialogue which mm -hmm. we've had with Beijing, we've always agreed to disagree on, on, on everything. We have mm -hmm. not agreed on anything, you see. So with this kind of a dialogue, and uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, you see a breakthrough is possible. So you just keep the talks going? Yes. It's only a form of communication where you can get your opinion across and you can hear what they are saying. But there is no meeting point. That's right. But in the case of Taiwan, uh, there are hopefuls, uh, hopes that uh, there could be breakthrough. Uh, in the uh, relationship between Taiwan and, and Beijing. Do you think that's too optimistic? I think that's really optimistic because you have to judge from their track record mm -hmm. of say the last 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, right? So judging from, from the track record, you see, I, I don't think it's possible, you mm -hmm. see? And I think, uh, but, but uh, you see, uh, there's one thing which is uh, of great concern is you see, uh, Beijing is playing this uh, uh, power game where they, 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 are they think that their power base should be in Asia as compared to the United States uh, power base. They're mm -hmm. trying to uh, uh, give Taiwan a sweetener to be able to move towards Beijing, yeah. you see. So this is what uh, I think is happening, you see. Mm -hmm. And I think um, this on the long term would be harmful for Taiwan's, uh, uh, what do you call this, um, uh, uh, for the Taiwanese people because this is not in the, uh, what do you call, interests of the Taiwanese people. That's right. But uh, with the rise of China, uh, people have different views about how China will react to the issue of Taiwan and to the issue of Tibet. So do you think that a stronger China will take a more harder position on some of those issues or will be more uh, lenient on those issues? So uh, l let me tell you, you see, in, um, in 1979 when we started dialogue, mm. why did Deng Xiaoping start this dialogue or want this dialogue? So when China was weak economically, mm -hmm. they wanted to have a settlement with Tibet. Yeah. But today, when they are strong and they are in control, they become much tougher. That's right. You see, so this is this is this is completely, uh, uh, you see, uh, their relations is adverse to their political power, their economic power. Yeah. So when they are weak economically, they want to have some sort of. Uh, a, a, a settlement or some sort of a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. But when they become very strong, like uh, when we stopped our dialogue in uh, 1995 until 2003, that period, their economy improved, they became very strong, and mm -hmm. they said, we don't need you anymore. Yeah. You see? So this is the kind of policy which they have. But the thing is, uh, there are different views about whether China is weak or strong now. You know, Yes, China is rising, but there are also many internal problems right. facing China. And so if we have different views about what China is now, there will be different conclusions about whether China will take a harder or softer approach. Right. What's your take mm -hmm. on that? So vis-a-vis uh, -vis Tibet, okay, let, let me get back, let's get back to Tibet. So you see, uh, uh, when, the, when the, the Tibetan economy is stronger and better, what do the Tibetan people say? We want more freedom of religion and mm -hmm. we want more human rights, okay? Yeah. So, but what does Beijing do during that period? So they say no and crack down as they always crack down as before, okay? Mm -hmm. So they won't say, no, no, we'll, we'll treat you leniently and we'll let you go, no. So mm -hmm. it's, it shows that Beijing, when they were weak, they did the same thing. When they're strong, they do the same thing, vis-a-vis -vis Tibet, it's That's unchanged. Right. So yes. their policy towards mm. Tibet is yes. always very rigid. Very rigid, right. But on the other hand, there are also concerns about internal implosion yes. Yes. inside uh, China. Right. Right. And that could also create some problems for uh, those countries, right. neighboring countries, right. but also for uh, different regions yes. in China. Yes. Do you think that internal implosion would be good or bad for Tibetan people? I, I think you see, uh, if China does not handle the Tibetan problem uh, carefully, right? There, there is a danger of further implosions inside China. Mm -hmm. You see, if they allow uh, the Tibetan people to have more freedom, that will also create more implosions. Yeah, right. If they do not give them uh, that kind of freedom and control them, like what they are doing in in Xinjiang and Tibet, th this this is always going to be a problem area for them. 
because mm -hmm. these two areas cover more than one third of the total area of China. And if yeah. these two were to separate or to do to do such a thing, it would be uh, uh, you see disastrous for China. Mm -hmm. You see that's why uh, uh, the two main areas of uh, you see of contention are Tibet and Xinjiang. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of exchanging uh, experiences mm -hmm. between Taiwan and Tibet. What do you think that uh, the current situation now, current relationship now between Taiwan and your government is exile? I think you see from 2000, you see the DBP went out of their way to uh, get in close touch with His Holiness. They invited him to, to Taiwan yeah. twice. And I, I, let me tell you, when His Holiness first came here in 1997, he asked me, I'm very worried because I'm going to Taiwan, because this is the first time I'm going to meet so many Chinese. Mm -hmm. So uh, I told His Holiness, that if you go to Taiwan and if you're successful, this is the stepping stone for China. Mm -hmm. And when His Holiness came back from Taiwan the first time and he told me, I can't believe how friendly the people of Taiwan are mm -hmm. and I want to go back. Nice. So because of this, the relationship has become very good. And not only that, and he, he says, I cannot say, because the Chinese have put two conditions on us. One is to say that uh, Tibet is part of China, which he says, but he says the part where he has to say Taiwan is part of China, That's he right. says this is for the people of Taiwan to decide their own destiny, not for him, yeah. because he came to Taiwan and found out. That is how good the mm. relation, and this time in March in Delhi, um, the Taiwan uh, representative, he told the Taiwan representative, I want to go back to Taiwan <laughs> and meet my friends. And this is how good the relationship is between uh, you see the people of Taiwan and the Dalai Lama. So Beijing has been forcing uh, his holiness Dalai Lama to take a position yes. on the Taiwan issue. Yes, and uh, this is, uh, on this issue his holiness is very clear. He says, I am not Taiwanese and this is for the people of Taiwan to decide for their future. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, I have nothing to say about this. Mm -hmm. So he is very clear and we have uh, completely, uh, what do you call, sidelined this, uh, mm. uh, the, the, this condition. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll talk about the, uh, what had been you know, uh, developed over the past few years right. uh, in the relationship between Taiwan and uh, your government exile. Sure. And yeah. also we'll talk about the future prospects sure. of this bilateral relationship. Very good. Very good. So stay with us. We'll be back after this few moments.